Good evening everyone, I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video. I wanted to break away in this video from the whole topic of calculus and functions and do something different. In this video we're looking at a geometry challenge where we're going to prove the area of an irregular trapezoid. You all will probably know the formula for an area of a trapezoid. How can we go about proving that specifically for an irregular trapezoid? The first thing we need to address is what's the difference between a regular and an irregular trapezoid. In all instances, trapezoids have two pairs of parallel lines. Here's one pair right here, the base. You can call this base two, and here's another, base one. This is a regular trapezoid, that's an irregular trapezoid, but in both instances, you have two pairs of parallel lines. This one right here, and the one on the top, the one on the top, and the one on the bottom. And then all trapezoids on both of these instances will have an equal length of height. You can see equal height length in both instances. There's no change to that. The change arises here with regards to this, the non-parallel sides, because these two sides are not parallel, they converge. Here's a side and here's a non-parallel side. Here's a side and here's its corresponding non-parallel side. In a regular trapezoid, which is this regular, you can have a good line of symmetry between the left side and the right side. They'll be equal in all instances. This right here is a mirror image of that side. But in irregular trapezoid, you bisect the trapezoid into two halves. You don't have equal left and right halves. This side obviously has a side over here, non-parallel side, which is much vastly different than this. Here, these two non-parallel sides are equal in terms of angles angulation and in terms of length here in terms of the angulation these two non-parallel sides are vastly different so this right here is an irregular trapezoid but in all instances the area of a trapezoid whether it's regular or irregular it's always half times height times b1 plus b2 in this video i'm going to show you in this geometry challenge how we can use geometry to prove this for this I've shown you how we can do the area of derivation of a regular trapezoid and I showed you two calculus techniques, integral calculus. But we're not talking about calculus here at all. We'll look at this area, this formula for this irregular trapezoid and we'll prove this formula to be true for an irregular trapezoid. So the technique I'm going to show you for proving the area of an irregular trapezoid is just one way. This is how I would do it and you can follow any other way or you can refer to any textbook and see and determine a different kind of way. But this technique and this way of doing it is actually fun. If you have an irregular trapezoid here, you have two non-parallel sides but they're unequal in all regards. You have two parallel sides, the base and the two bases. It starts by you identifying these two as being heights. These heights are equal to each other because these are parallel bases therefore the height must be the same we can identify this top base as b1 we can identify this lower base as b2 but if you look at this lower base b2 it's comprised of three different segments from here to here and then from here to here and then from here to here this segment right here must be equivalent to b1 you can arbitrarily just call this segment here a and you can call that c but when you look at this entire formula, you've broken it into three shapes. You have two triangles and one rectangle. You can look at the area of this. The area of this triangle, you know, is half base and height. You let half times A times H, base times height of that triangle. The area of this triangle corresponding is again also a half base and height. It'll be half HC. The area of this rectangle is not too hard. It's a rectangle. The area of this rectangle is going to be B1H. You must also pay very special attention to this fact right here, the lower base. The lower base, B2, is made up of three segments, A plus B1 plus C. This fact will come very handy at the end. Now we have a total area of this trapezoid or trapezium which is comprised of three different individual areas and let's add them up. We have this one area right here, AH over 2, which is this triangle. Then we have this B1H, which is the rectangle, and then we have that hc over 2. All you have to do here for this proof is do a common denominator. The common denominator here is 2 and you have ah here you left 2b1h because 1 goes into 2 times and multiplies with the numerator plus hc. When you look at this there's a commonality you see and the commonality is h. You can pull the h out isolated along with its fraction 2. What you have left over here, the numerator is A plus 2B1 plus C. If you look at this part in the parentheses, you can expand it out as such H over 2. You have A plus B1 plus B1 plus C. 
but I've already told you here a plus b1 plus c is equal to b2. You can take out this a, this b1 and this c and substitute them for a b2. You have h over 2 and then you have a b1 which is this lone b1 and then these three comprising to give you a b2 and this geometry challenge is solved. Half times height times base 1 plus base 2, the sum of these two bases times half times the height giving you the area of the irregular trapezoid that you see over here. Again, remember this right here is an irregular trapezoid because of these segments right over here. They are unequal because of the way they are. Different angulation, different segment lengths and that makes them an irregular two sides making this an irregular trapezoid. So that right here is this geometry challenge completed using a geometry technique for this proof and it's done. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.